Well, I think we can wrap this up in just a little bit. There'll be a little post discussion on this. Here we have it. It's at rest. We're going to run it for one last time. What we're going to do is we're going to, after making this last set of mods, we're going to look at that and see just about how effective this whole placing of fans is inside of this John's Bow case. So let's get to it. We'll have a video edit because I've got to reposition the tripod and get it up in that top corner while we won Cinebitch. Now this is after Cinebench has run for 10 minutes and we can see that just with the mismatched fans, the two in the corner with the cooler, the cooler master, the little baby cooler that we've run over 10 minutes with Cinebench at 100% and we're watching the frequency has been stable this whole time at 4 gigahertz. Maximum on the processor is 4.2. I'd like to see it a little higher than that, but it's running a 100% processor this whole time. Look, clicks here and there, maybe drop down to just a little bit as time goes on, but it's, a, it's designed to be a 100% processor taxing. And we can see the temperatures are running high 50s, low 60s, and you can see what the maximums have been, you know, as the curves have to adjust. So what we're going to do is we're going to start playing with this. Well, let's have some fun time now. What I have before you is the case as we just tested it. We have the one intake fan, lots of holes, so there's no way it's going to build up pressure and have a cutoff effect on either fan. We're bringing air through here, blowing it through, and some will get pulled up in this area to this fan, no doubt, and that helps it cool. And the air pushing up this way is going to just push up in this area and be pulled over and so that's a very efficient way to do it but I have one more fan just because I want to play and they also have one of these cute little metal finger guards which is going to be impossible to touch it when you're in here but it kind of emulates the big machine that we're in process of building so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this pull the cooler swap the fan mount and turn this into a pull versus a push and then we'll retest it and see if we get any benefit out of that. Now I want to show you how well this was pasted. It's just not a big deal. You put a single dot in the middle of that about three millimeters in diameter and you come over here on this one and you see look at that perfect coverage without glopping over the edge. No need for expensive little plastic pieces and whatnot. If anything, it's got a little bit heavy on the case, but you see the integrated heat shield is adequately covered. It's just, you don't have to do X's or fancy pad or any UV stuff like that. Just know how to paste a simple cooler on. All right, the air conditioner is running. We're just gonna live with it till we can get this thing shot. All we did, we left, we left all three fans in their spots. Remember, these two are wired together off of one PWM, so intake and exhaust are kind of balanced. We have this set up. These are wired together, this one and this one, so that as the cooler pushes harder, we pull harder going out of the case. That should work. Now, because we move from this side to this side, we'll get a little less short circuit of blowing air and pulling through this way, which would still cool, but we'll still pull it pull a little less this way. We're going to pull it straight through, maybe into it from all sides, which should be a little bit more efficient. And when we discharge, it's going to leave the case, so we shouldn't see as much self-heating inside the case. So let's go put it over there, get it together, run Cinebench again, and see what the temperatures and frequencies. Maybe it went down. Maybe we messed up a little bit. Maybe we, we're just confused. I don't know. Let's see. Dude, could you just get to the point and show me something I haven't thought of before? I've got some trivial business that's far more important than watching your video. You know, like showering, shaving, taking a little nap, maybe getting a snack a little bit later. Come on, speed it up. 
we're getting ready to finish the loop and it says we ended this time up at 311 a little bit lower than we were a while ago but i adjusted the fans down to get a little bit lower noise i have a little less volume the cpu fans that set i left alone so they just cranked out what they did but what is our magic temperatures well pretty well much like they was a while ago now are you ready to ride the crazy train to crazy town with me are you ready for some unconventional thinking? But now let's think of it in terms of physics and not just what we see on the internet. Now, this is a very small process. It doesn't really take that much to cool it. And this is a twin tower or twin radiator, depending on how you want to call it. I think the internet likes calling these things towers. I'm not really sure. Maybe it's the Lord of the Ring type thing. But anyway, I believe that I could actually adequately ventilate this case with that processor with just this one fan. But I did buy three initially, one for exhaust, one for intake for the, for the actual case flow, and then one for exhaust for the cooler area. I know that's three, not two, but we have a basic idea. Now what would happen, let's just look at this situation right here. Now imagine that this was a full eight hole mini ATX or micro ATX instead of the smaller four hole MATX board. Because with the smaller board it forces everything this way because we have to have room to get to the RAM on the, when we're laying out the board obviously. But now we're going to be pulling in a, a little bit of air. These aren't high velocity fans the way I have the curve set. So they're going to pull just a little bit of air, push into the case and there's plenty of holes all the way around. everywhere but the glass front we have holes. So we have no chance of building up positive or negative pressure, so to speak. It's just silliness that the internet comes up with. So we're gonna push a little bit of air up in here. It's gonna be cool room air. There's nothing to heat it from this position. So it will pull up into this area, be pulled into this first tower or the first fan, this push fan. Any excess can go anywhere else in the case. Now, we have a second fan that we've added since the last edit. It's also wired, so these three are wired together, so they have exactly the same fan curve. Now, if I don't have a, a, get a fan in here yet, what do we do? When the air blows across this tower or this radiator, it's going to pick up heat, just like, just like any other uh, coil. It's either going to pick up heat in the form of making something cooler, or it's going to pu push off heat if the air, depending on where the, air, the ambient air is above or below the air that the coil is trying to push off, it's just going to feel either hot or cold. Well, it's going to be hotter here, right? Because we're, put, we're pulling in cool air, taking the heat off the processor on this set of pipes. But this pipe is really that pipe, and this pipe is really that pipe. So they're the same pipes. So this whole cooler side, this whole radiator, is all aluminum and they're all touching. It's going to be very difficult for this to be at a different temperature in some respects as this one would be because it is all this is touching except that we have the links that go under and come back up so all of these coils are going to be at the same temperature now they're only a u-shaped coil they're not a loopy thing but the air coming across here is going to pick up the heat that's what it's supposed to do now if we put this next fan in like everyone shows and i know that's that's right there if that goes in that spot what happens this is pushing air in here. The air in here gets warmer. Warmer air enters this fan and it pushes warmer air over this coil. So the, the degree of temperature rise that comes off of this, this tower is going to go into this one to heat that side. And they're going to kind of normalize a little bit because they are the same tube. This tube is that tube and this tube is that tube, that type of thing. But what if we did something just crazy town what if we did have an eight hole board and we were able to then put the fan on this side in the pull fashion you see what i'm talking about now i don't have enough room with with this exhaust fan to do that but say we had a push and a pull and this gap in between what is going to happen with the airflow that pushes up here it's going to be coming out of this this tower it's going to come out here this is going to pull it because this is in exhaust mode. It's going to try to pull some out this way. This is going to try to push some up this way. The, the three airs are going to hit themselves and we're going to pull some of the heat off of this first tower is going to go out of the case. 
that will then allow more cooler air, ambient air, to enter this one because we're we're in a pull configuration with the fan on this side. You see that right there? The fan would be on that side. So it would pull it would kind of pull through here in this direction, through the coil, cross the coil as this one's pushing, and we're going to leave some of the heat immediately out of the case, bringing cooler air into this tower. Now I can't fit it in there with this small board because the processor is this way. But on a regular size board, it's far enough this way that you could actually have the, the push and the pull and a small air gap between that and your exit fan, your, your exhaust fan that's pulling all of that air straight out of the box. Being close coupled like that, when the distance between the two fans is very small, it really means that this one trying to pull on it or this trying to push on it really doesn't dislodge it that much because this one, this outer one is pulling hard. This one is pulling hard across the second tower and we cool down. How about that for some crazy town? It's a way, it's a way you might find to improve some of the thermal performance. Or maybe not, it could just be a bunch of bollocks. If you like this content, please go to calldeltacell.com, find the tab that says on YouTube, click it, and it'll open up a page of QR codes. There you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the YouTube page, or you can just mouse over and click it on a PC. There you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you. Thank you. All right, now, if I were to have tried to put that second fan in a pull configuration here, I would have to bring the wire on this side, these little clips are on each side of this thermal, what is this one? That's not a thermal assassin, it's a thermal phantom spirit is what this is, SE 120. So these little metal clips, and I prefer these metal clips over other options because they're so easy to work with and they hold up well. And I like the thermal right because they are you can put them on either side of the coil. We could spin this coil, the set of coils or fans or towers, whatever you want to call it. We could spin that around and position it higher toward the top of the case if we needed some room at the bottom or vice versa. So this is in the low position and I have plenty of room to get back to my clips. But what if I didn't? Well, check this out. Let me drop this into position. All right, there's a backdrop. Now here's one of the little wires. Can we see that well enough? Now, say you're having difficulty getting to it. You can take a simple wire tie, and this is a trick that I've never seen anybody else do. I'm not saying I invented it, but we can just put that on there like this, roll it on around, work it around until we get it to the middle. I'm trying to do this. This goes in the bottom. Let me turn it around as if it was the top. Now I have a little pull handle this goes into the fan on the two hook sides and then we can use this to tug on it to get that clip in say this was very tight like that previous computer i just showed you a few episodes again when i was upgrading it it didn't have the room it had to go very high and it's, you couldn't really get your fingers toward the top it's the limitation of that corsair case now once you use it you just kind of clip off your wire tie so that it's there where you can just reach it the next time you need to pull it tight because you can always get it off on the lower end but to get that top nice and tight you do have to pull it and that's just a little trick now some people may not like a wire tie or a, a pull tab but you would only use it if you're having an extremely tight case on the upper end and you can't reach back there anyway What we're going to do is we're going to, after making this last set of mods, we're going to look at that and see just about how effective this whole placing of fans is inside of this John's Bow case. So let's get to it. We'll have a video edit because I've got to reposition the tripod and get it up in that top corner while we won Cinebitch. A few moments later. Now... I did bump the camera and I lost about 30 seconds in this. We're coming down to the wire. I set a timer. I don't know if you can see that. That's 7 minutes, 11. This is on top of the 10 minute stabilization that it runs. So this is running about 30 seconds behind. So that's 18 and a half minutes 
just about that this thing has been running and you can see what the temperatures are you could see what the frequency was now it's shutting back down it's a 65 watt processor and it was running only about 53 55 it's been governed down we didn't hit the 42 we never got to the 42 with it and i have seen that before the last bios update so i may roll it back it's certainly not too hot so what do you say we go down and do some maths let's go look at how things are and form some conclusion based upon the you know the observations that we can make from what we just did what do you say well let's take it to the center panel okay here we have it up here we have on this one little nine dollar fan that that if you buy in packs of five they're about five bucks a piece this this arctic p12 pwm 120 fan they do have a very low minimum rpm which is great if you don't like dusting up your computer and it sits there idle most of the time they will do zero db if you get below five percent they say according to the the material that they'll turn themselves off there's a variant of this guy where you can actually daisy chain them together this one is not this one i had to use a splitter for pretty good fan says six year limited warranty has fluid dynamic bearing five to ten bucks a piece you can't beat that price but anyway 56.3 cfm now we look down how many i mean liters to the cfm do we have and there's 28.31 this number you see it right here right and we put it up here in our calculator so if that's one one cfm and i've got my times up here we're going to put this five six point three where's my three right there so that's how many csms that just one fan alone can do that would be at maximum be it wouldn't be making its most noise but that's the maximum it can do let's hit equal and you see we have one thousand five nine four not uh, with a point there on the 24 so what does that tell you let's just round this up to 1600 now this is the john's bow case that we use we actually use the black although we did consider getting the the orange one orange and black together we weren't really sure how we felt about that so we just got the john's bow there there's our little one with a little orange it kind of looks like a roaster but we went ahead and went black because you know this was not a design build this was an emergency build so let's go down here i think we have the capacity down here somewhere yes there it is this says this is only about 20 liter volume right 20 liters so let's go back to our calculator right here now you see this number let's just go ahead and round since we're doing about 20 liters let's just go ahead and round that up to say 1600 liters per minute right because we were at 56.3 cfm there's 28.31 liters in the one cfm you see that right there i'm not making this up so what do we know if we have 20 going into let's just call the 1600 right so 20 in to 1600 we can drop to zero and call that two goes into 160 how many times well it goes in there 80 times so if this one fan was running at full blast we would have effectively 80 changes of air inside that little case okay so all right so let's run it at, at 50 percent capacity so we're at, at 40 times a minute we're changing the air out all right so let's put two of these things in there in either in either intake or exhaust assuming that that they're just they're blowing in there we can still drop it down we'll still change it how many times a minute are we changing that air out so this little guy didn't cool any worse than the great big dual fan did they basically ran the same because you just all you're doing in most cases most fans in most cases 
boxes cases, in most instances of putting fans in boxes, you're exchanging the total air volume out of that box over and over and over many more times than you may actually need. So the point is, is back to the discussion we had in a previous video where we talked caution science. It's all about not having positive or negative pressure, but you either have one or two approaches. Either you're trying to specifically draw air across something designed to have it pulled over in that direction, or you're just simply replacing a small volume like in this John's Bow box with your room air that is significantly cooler. The other limitations on your function will be how does your cooler actually take that off of the integrated heat shield? How is your pasting going? Did you do a good job with that? Once you've pasted and you got a good transfer, you're not going to take that much more off of the heat shield than can be transferred over a given point in time. It, that becomes your weakest link. How much of a premium are you paying to have the light show to, to run the circus there. I mean, if that's what you want, go ahead and do it. But you really don't need, in most cases, I would dare say you really don't need a lot of case ventilation for most most systems. They're going to be geared at keeping that processor. Now, you don't want your processor self-heating back and forth, but you might be able to just take it, like in my case, this John's Bow case, and the other cases, they're pretty well much set where you can line up the exhaust fan and that cooler kind of head to head so that when it discharges, this one takes it right out. And you might find that there's just at, at that kind of that kind of exchange at 80 changes per minute, the inside of that case is going to be about as cool as you can keep it. And it may be a lot cooler than you think at a lot less RPM. So you may not be getting the boost you think. So are you saying we're doing something wrong? No. Are you saying we're stupid? No. Well, what are you saying? Well, what I guess I'm saying is, is with these fans, I'm a pretty good fan of them off the bat. They've got a six year warranty. They got fluid dynamic bearing. They've got a good minimum airflow. They've got good maximum airflow. I found them online available for five for $25, and which is cheaper than if you buy them one and two at a time like I did at $10 a piece. I think they're going to be decent fans. And with a recession on the way, you might have to find some way to keep the money where it does you the most good. And if you understand the purpose and how the airflows actually work, you can keep your equipment cool without breaking the bank. Also, if you like a little bit of color in your system and you don't have memory already, how about doing like RGB memory sticks, your DRAMs? See, I, I already had the memory, so I'm not going to do that. But you know, it's a way to put a little bit of color in there and still come out with a machine that works very nicely, works well. I don't know if they're available in white. They probably are. I don't know. I haven't looked. Maybe they are. Maybe they're not. But I don't like the white plastics because white plastics and paints, white things yellow really quickly and at different rates. And I keep my stuff for a very long time. And I, if I decide to put a different uh, main board in there or birthing person board in there, because I like the case, it's all it's all metal. It's not built cheaply. It's a good quality case. I like the size, not too hard to work in. It's overall, I think it was a pretty good build. And I, I like I like black cases, and I don't like a lot of flash. But you could have a little bit of flash with your memory if you like a little color in it. I did put a strip in there just for the views. But uh, yeah, I guess that's all I'm trying to say. Just trying to bring about a little different viewpoint in this type of subject. Mm -hmm.